Oh, shoot. All right, doing this for my phone. So, what's up, Mark? We'll wait till a few people get here. <clears throat> then we're going to start into it. Give you about, I don't know, let's say, we'll start about maybe, I don't know, about 10 minutes or so, five minutes, something like that. Start putting this stuff up in this thing. So what's up, everybody? Just got out of the shower. Hair's all wet and whatnot. I had a whole bunch of suggestions, but I've been busy, busy, busy. So what's happening, Robert? What you doing, buddy? I ain't seen you around lately. Been working a lot. So I've been super, super busy, and I said I was gonna put one out. Before the weekend, so I am. It's a little late, but it is what it is. I'm going to put it out anyway. So maybe if y'all want to learn something, stick around. Uh, we caught some soccer earlier. I just made like a quick little evening trip. We caught some. And uh, yeah. Got some pretty good news. What's up, Marty? Got some pretty good news from the doctor, too. He said I can fish as long as I don't use my right hand to cast. Or we'll set the hook. There you go. I'm not going there though. I'm not going to that spot. I'm going to a different one. <laughs> I had to. My job makes me shave, unfortunately. Because if not, I'd probably have a beard down the hair. I, I, I hate shaving. It's terrible. I need a haircut too. Kind of look like, I don't know, like a lesbian. I'm not going to say that. Yes, yeah, so I got a bunch of stuff. Just been busy. Give it about another, I don't know, three minutes or so. But I got a bunch of baits I could show y'all. But I'm going to tell you everything I know about spawn and soccer, or at least as much as I can just off the top of my head, you know. So that's what I'm going to do. I actually went to the store this evening and bought like $40 worth of stuff. And um, shout out to Brennan. I seen Brennan today. He was in the last video. If you ain't seen that one, go check that out. If you want to go see the big bass that I caught, uh, the Bass Quest video, go watch that. Uh, I worked my behind off on that video. The video was awesome. I love it. Shut up, George. Hey, call me, idiot. Not right now, though. I'm probably going to get a call in the middle of this. I'm going to be so aggravated. But, um, go do that. Oh, and one of my friends, one of my friends said, once you catch a big bass, they fall like dominoes. And they did. So I caught a six, then I caught a four, then I caught a six ten, then I caught a five six. I wasn't recording for the six ten, but I got the picture. I uh, think I'll, I'll put it up in another video. I'll share it on my Instagram. If you don't know my Instagram name, it's Rugaroo88. Um, and my, um, Snapchat is Doug Blanda. So if you want to go follow me on those platforms, go, I don't have a Twitter. I'll probably never have a Twitter. So it is what it is. I'm just waiting to five minutes and then I'm going to say, I don't know. I might, it just depends. Um, it depends really on how I feel. Um, you know, it's kind of. It's kind of just one of them things. I really hope George wins this year, and I know George don't want me to fish it because I'm a tan to his behind. So he can say whatever he wants. But I got third last year on my second time ever fishing it, and he didn't get nothing. So he can say whatever he wants. So if y'all don't know who George is, it's Swamp Sompa. If you ever see him out and about, get a tip from him because dude's amazing fisherman so is james they're both amazing fishermen thanks marky mookie bricotta's cousin george i will slam you down all right 15 minutes we're gonna go into the spawning stuff no not 15 minutes 15 nine seconds okay eight seconds seven six nine, 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 nine. i'm doing this on my phone so all right let's get into it 
So what happens is you have, socolate like to get close to the structure, especially when they're spawning. They like to get toward the shallows, toward the cypress, tupelo trees, willow trees, laydowns, grass patches, rocks, anything that's structure oriented. So whenever you're doing that, like vertical structure, stuff like that, they're not gonna be in a deeper, deeper, deeper water, okay? They're gonna be more toward the shallow part. Okay, I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna tell you where I was today, but I'm gonna tell you what happened today. All right, this canal that we fish, it, what it does is when it starts off at the bank like this, it drops down and then as in the middle, it comes up as a hump. And then it goes on the other side, instead of going like this, like a normal canal, like a U, you know, it's got a hump in the middle. And we were thrown out there and on right on top of that hump, we was catching our soccer lane. We was catching them on jigs, uh, catching them on a matrix mini. I was catching them on a matrix mini. James was catching them on some kind of chartreuse, another one that had a little boot tail. And uh, got a lot of stuff, a lot of different baits I have. So here we go. This is probably my oldest box, as you see. It is old. Uh, you know, I've caught a lot of fish on these type of baits right here um wait we at these right here these are killer you can get these at walmart they're creme and uh i like the feather tails because they feel i feel like it just has a more natural profile got some slip corks got an old light up cork i've probably been having this thing for years this is another good color i missed the biggest sock lay i've ever had on my line on this thing right here first time i ever used it I uh, got some black and blue, some road runners, some pink, got stuff like that. But today when I went to the store, I bought some little crankbaits. I've had some success on those sometimes. I got these little minnows with the spinner on them. And I got some gold, all different sizes. The Bobby Garland Moglos, those are really good. This stuff right here, I, I had this a long time and I ain't never really even used it, any of it. I ain't, I just found this earlier i haven't really used anything in this i actually bought this to use for um <clears throat> rainbow trout and stuff in the smokies and when i went to seattle but i had to push down the hooks and everything the barb so i gotta redo all little treble hooks on these <clears throat> but all this stuff will work real good for socle <clears throat> So what happens, it tends to happen is the socolate get a female, right? They get on a female and a bunch of males get around them, okay? This is what we did today. We didn't catch barely any females. I don't think we caught a single female. Most of the fish we caught today were males. And that's what we were doing. We was catching the males and Brendan was out there, but he was out there a little bit earlier than us. And he was just slow rolling it, real slow on the bottom. And he was catching them on like a beetle spin and a uh, just a regular old jig on a jig head, just reeling it real slow, kind of almost hopping off the bottom. But it's using strong enough line when you get hung up that you can bend the hook out and not lose your bait. That's a key right there. So you're not going out there spending a lot, a lot of money because the soccer they like to sit in the structure. It's just what they like to do. They don't like to be, they don't like bass when they get on like flats and stuff. They're gonna be in something that has structure. They're structure oriented fish. If you ever look at a socolay, the heads are like this. It scoops up like this, okay? And their eyes are up, okay? Most socolay feed up, okay? So if you're fishing on the bottom, most of the time, unless they glued on the bottom, you kind of want the bait above the head, okay? That's another thing that, uh, is is pretty important change up your depth use a slip float anything you can you can try any kind of float you want and you just gotta work just different depths every day is different and i try to preach to everybody it's not the same all the time like some people will sit there especially when we're out there like speckled trout fishing people will be like Man, they ain't got no fish here. Blah, blah, blah. And me, James, and George sat there one day, and George will tell y'all in the comments right now that it said, uh, George would uh, tell you right now that everybody left the spot, and then we started smashing them on top water. Now, that was a while back, a few videos ago. Go check that out if you want. Um, 
Sorry I'm shaking the thing so much. I only got one good arm. It's hard to hold it with my right all the time. So I kind of just hold it with my left. So the other thing is they get real territorial. They don't like stuff being around them. Something I learned a long time ago. I was watching a little Asian guy. He had probably about a three foot cane pole. And he sat there. What's happening, Dalton? He sat there and just jigged inside the cypress knees. And when he did that, he was sitting there catching a whole bunch of fish. Let me put this thing on something so I can talk and not be in pain. All right, there we go. All right. Let me get something to sit on. Oh, damn, I stepped on my hook. All right. So, nah, this is not going to work. Give me one second. I'm gonna find something to set this on. Problems of being live. Can't edit this crap. Make me look dumb. I am dumb. It is what it is. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. Whatever. I'm just gonna hold it. So, okay. Another thing is too, is during the spring we get a lot of fronts, and what happens is when you get like a east or like. You know, you get a certain type of wind, it sucks all the water out. Then the water gets shallow. It gets shallow to the point where where you was catching chocolate maybe a couple days before, they're not there no more. And you're like, what the hell is going on? What happens is, is those fish that was hiding in the structure go to the ledges. Or they find some little bit deeper structure until the water comes back up and the temperature comes. And then they'll get in the thick of the structure. In the place that y'all seen and the uh, big black crappy uh the spawn is on video pretty much put it right on the outside or jig it within the bush i can't tell you how many times that i've, I've dropped a jig in a bush and caught soccer especially at twin canals a long time ago okay this is that time of year you're going to catch them in bunches i'm just going to talk about um spawning soccer i'm not going to talk about like summer soccer and nothing so just talking about Swan and Stockley. So if y'all got any questions, here's your time to ask. Uh, I can't really think of anything else right now. Oh, don't, um, my suggestion, don't use braid. Them damn fish are smart. They got big old eyeballs. Most of them, they hunt at night a lot um, or low light conditions. And the way that they're suited, like their body, their camouflage, is to blend in next to structure so they'll sit up in there and they like to be in that shady area especially if it's sunny outside if it's overcast they'll kind of roam you know they'll roam uh if it's sunny they want to be glued to that structure it's kind of the same thing with bass almost you know so uh nighttime fishing for soccer is one of the best things you can absolutely do um we used to catch them tons and people always, it's the easiest time of year to catch soccer when the spawn is on. Uh, just because, like I said, they group up. You get a bunch of males around a female trying to fertilize the eggs and pass on their genes. That's what happens. And uh, like bass, they'll get like maybe two, maybe three males. No, soccer will freaking get like 10 of them on them. You know, so when you find them, work that area, work that area thorough. And uh, you'll be able to catch them. If you can't catch them on jigs, try like a little swim bait. I showed you a little swim bait. Try a little crank bait. Um, beetle spins. Just doing uh, stuff with the beetle spins like that. And then the last, <laughs> and I don't care if it's cheating. I'll do it anyway. I will throw live shinas. I have no shame. I don't care. I like catching soccer. It's probably one of my favorite fish. And uh, just to tell y'all something too. I thought the record for black crappie was six pounds. Just found out the other day that it's not. It's actually 382, I think it is. It was caught in Poverty Point, which is pretty sad because my uncle caught a socle that weighed four pounds and like five ounces. He's not alive anymore, and I don't know where his damn mounts are. So if you're watching this video and you got a big giant socle mount and you don't know where you got it from, might be my uncle if it says scott bland on it please let me know because i would love to have that i'd buy it from you so yeah he would have had the record ain't that a shame 
James missed one. I know he's going to hate me for saying this, but he missed one that was probably like three pounds. I don't know, George, how big he looked. I know you like to give him a lot of crap for it. I missed one about four a few years ago, and that culvert, if y'all know what I'm talking about, I missed a big, big, big one. So, all right. Heard someone complain the record was. Yeah, that's the unofficial one. That's what I thought. And then I looked it up, and the official one is like 3A2 because a little girl was supposed to catch it. A, a little girl was uh, supposedly caught a six pounder in uh, Air, uh, West Wego Canal. And I was like, no one's ever going to beat that. Because, I mean, you'll see some fives in, like, other states. You don't really ever see them here, you know. My uncle actually caught a five-pound in Mississippi. So. So, any questions, start asking. Ooh. So I'll just kind of ramble on. I know I've been rambling anyway. But one of pretty much the time, you're welcome. Uh, you want to know anything else? I, I'm, I know I'm forgetting something. Let me see here. I'm going to grab him black. No, it was a black one. You know what he did? And here we go, another talking point. What he did is he took a five-gallon bucket, put a Christmas tree in it, put some cement in it, and dropped them vertically in probably about 15 feet of water. And he would throw it on the top of that with a sh like a five-inch shiner, five, six-inch shiner, and catch giants. I got a picture of him. Uh, I'll put it up at some point. I think I put it up in an older video. Um, I'll put it up in another Socolade video at the end of the video. He's holding his little chihuahua at the time. And the Socolade was from his shoulder to almost his hip. This thing was huge. And it doesn't even look, the, the picture does not do it justice. I don't know if y'all understand that. GoPros make fish look small. I don't know why. That six pounder looked like a damn four pounder on the video. But the thing was six. If you stay to the end of the video, you get to see the pictures that George took. That fish is actually at the taxidermy. Uh, I'm real picky when it comes to me mounting fish. I'm only going to mount I'm mounting that one. And I got a rooster fish one. Oh, crappy good right now where you went in the last video. It's different every single time. You know, one day it could be lights out. And another day it could be just nothing. It just sucks. But, or you can just catch a few. You might not catch like 20 or something. And it's a, a lot of people go back there. What's my favorite fish to eat? My favorite fish to eat is tuna. I love sushi. I eat sushi once a week. <laughs> I swear. My bank account don't like it though. So, so uh, tuna, snapper. I love more offshore stuff. I'm actually going to buy an offshore boat. Uh, this is 2019. Probably in 2020. I'm going to buy. I'm going to start running offshore guides. Triple tail too. Triple tail is phenomenal. And I got a one that's called. Yes. Don't beat yourself up if you can't go out there and catch them. I've been doing this for 25 years, and you know how many times I've been humbled more than I've caught? A lot, you know, and I've just, in the recent years, just kind of, all right, I don't get humbled as much. I'll catch a few or something like that, but, you know, a lot of people measure success by limits. Well, limit of Sakale is 50, and there's only a few people I've ever met that ever caught 50 Sakale. I know George has caught it, James has caught it, my grandpa's caught it, and... If you've caught 50 Sokolay, which is the limit down here in Louisiana, put it down in the comment. I want to know. I've never caught 50. The most I've ever caught was probably around 35, 35, 36. Um, that was back there off of Jean Lafitte Highway. Back in the day, it used to be the stuff. Whenever they had the old one, do you know the reason why the water is dirty by the culvert? The wind. The wind. That's why. The wind's just terrible, like just whipping in, day in it, day out. You need a couple days, but really no wind. Let that silt go down. But um, if you want to go catch bass or something like that, I would say a rattling bait, a jig with something too crappy. Like, oh. yeah. 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 Yes. All right. So get on Google Maps. If you want to find, if you want to go on a boat, 
and go catch spawning crappie, go find a main canal that leads into a whole bunch of... Jesus. Yeah, it just gets like that sometimes, man. You can get on them real good, especially in the summertime. Yeah, I'm going fishing tomorrow. I'll be going early, early in the morning, but I have stuff to do um, after. Uh, I'm trying to think. What the hell was I saying? Um, <clears throat> where did I stop at? Some spot? Yeah, I'm going to just a spot by the house toward Lafitte. Um, somebody tell me what I was saying. <laughs> I got ADD, so you see how I just jumped from subject to subject. Yeah, I see you there. <laughs> you might see me in the same spot. I don't like telling people where I'm going because, number one, I'm going to have a whole bunch of time. Go fishing and I go fishing and do like sometimes. Uh, Dulac, Dulac. The only time I've ever fished Dulac was with my friend Daniel for Speckle Trout. That was it. He was talking about that. Oh, okay. Main canals that lead into Little Finger Canals. You can look look at Airplane uh, Canal. I think yeah, it's air, Airplane Canal out of Bayou Net. Elite, it's a single canal that runs in, and it's little feeder canals that run all off. And that's where the soccer they like to spawn. And the bass will be in there too, but they'll be in... Uh, They'll be in uh, certain little areas, right? You'll have bass in some canals. You'll have soccer in some. Same thing. Look at the Gulf Canal system. Any place that you find that's got like maybe brackish or fresh water and it's got a lot of finger canals leading off, that's where you're going to find soccer during the spawn. I go for bull redfish. Yeah. I go, um, the only time I ever really, like I said, the only time I ever went out there, I went speckle trout fishing and I, we was catching them on these little hoochies it's like a little squid bait and it was a uh, blue and white almost like a soccer league jig almost and we were catching a few that day daniel put a whipping on me caught two redfish at that spot last weekend good job jesse i like catching redfish but the, they just don't do good on the channel i don't i don't know why with the crappy oh with the uh, cut bait that's pretty cool Using crappy for cut bait. You know what else likes crappy? Um, Osakale, what we call them down here in South Louisiana, is a uh, big alligator gar. I got an alligator gar video online also. I'm trying to remember what somebody. Okay. Oh, another thing is too using different size jig heads you do not know how important it is to use different size jig heads sometimes the sock they want it right past their face fast but a lot of the time they want it slow so just popping the slack in the line and just barely moving the cork will make that bait just do this and sometimes they'll come and eat it sometimes you got to pull it sometimes you got to pop it hard Oh, nice. Oh, we're going for Sockley. Um, I'm not I'm not up for any speckle trout fishing right now. Probably give it a little bit longer. And um, probably March. March, uh, I'm going to start going after some big speckle trout. Probably in the surf and Grand Isle. That's the way I want to go catch some big ones. And also, I'll show you all a picture in another video with a speckle trout video. My uncle, the one I was telling you about that caught that big sockley, he caught an eight and a half pound speckle trout off a pier in Mississippi. And me, James, and George are going to do that at some point in time. And uh, my grandma lives like two blocks away from the beach, so it's pretty nice. We can just, you know, take the uh, kayaks. I won't be able to kayak, or we'll be able to go fish off a pier. I caught uh, my biggest speckle trout ever over there, and it was like four and a half pounds, and it was a... a live shrimp that was about the size of a grass shrimp i also got a sprang wrist from not paying attention from one of them struck a trout out there so go ahead and laugh at me now one paying attention sucker hit the lawn and then snapped my damn wrist it hurt didn't feel good any more questions i'm not going to let this thing run for any more than 30 minutes so we're at 25 right now 
I'm about to go eat because I'm starving. All I ate today was like a Reese's. Because I'm fat. But I like to be fat. It's all right. Anybody got any more questions they could think of? <laughs> all right. Let's see. I'll tell you who can catch a lot of soccer late too. Uh, Robert Teichler. I don't know if I'm saying it right. I'm sorry, buddy. But... He can catch a lot of sock lay. He's been in some of my older videos. I think it was the monster crappie. It was the one that my brother caught. Uh, the one that was like two pounds, or it was like close to two pounds. That's a pretty, that's a pretty real one. That's a solid fish. Some people might not catch that their whole life. Yep, that's the one. Yep. You were tearing them up that day. You got that three pounder, you had some other fish. Oh, another place too. A friend of mine caught uh, like a two pound of Christian. He caught like a two pound soccer lay in City Park on a red eye shed. So, rattle traps. Rattle traps work good. Uh, Y'all see people doing like spider rigging and stuff. Uh, that's going to be something I get into. I'm getting my boat later this year and I'm going to do uh, bass fishing out of it, speckle trout, flounder, stuff like that. I want to do some flounder stuff coming up. Um, George is really good at it, way better than me. We went out there flounder the gigging. He was like, you lost? And I'm like, yeah, I'm lost. I can catch him online, but I'll show you how I did it. Appreciate it, shout outs. There you go. Yeah, just uh, send me, it doesn't matter how you, you can send me, I think you can send me a direct message Whatever like that. Yeah, George is old sneaky self. I seen him yesterday in City Park. and Well, actually, I didn't even see him. I seen his truck. And then he didn't come tell me hi or nothing. He was being mean. And then you try to call him. And he don't answer because he's got a cheap phone from T-Mobile. I'm calling you out because you need a better damn phone. I'll call you out. I don't care. This is what it is. Let's see. Let's see. All right. So... Normally, I start fishing for Sakale in November, pretty much the second week in November. Probably going to stop doing that for the reason being the second week in November, I go to Kentucky and I go hunting. Didn't get to do that this year. Went to go film some stuff, uh, but that was it. I didn't even catch what the, the kill or anything like that, so it just didn't look good, so never came out. But uh, yeah, uh, November all the way until April is kind of when I stop because the weather down here on the South Shore, or at least in the southern, uh, the, uh, the southern southern part, you know, the weather is gets pretty warm and stays warm. Maybe on the North Shore, you might be sticking them in May. I'm uh, not May. Uh, maybe May. It depends. Like last year, we had cool weather all the way up until May. We actually had a pretty mild, well, cold winter last year. This winter is nothing. Bass are spawning too. Bass are spawning. Sockley, uh, not Sockley, speckle trout. I got Sockley on the brain. But, um, yeah, got one more minute. Anything y'all could think to ask, go ahead and ask. You want to know some colors, anything. I don't even have my normal Sockley stuff. I only got some of the stuff I bought tonight and some of my older gear. So. Got a garage rack with rods. That thing's pretty cool. I need to kind of move it over a little bit. Leaves me a lot of space. Because look at all the junk in the corner. That's all a number of fishing rods over there. Fishing rods and reels. Stuff like that. Hey, calm down. Damn child. Alright, last second questions. Let's get it.
didn't think I could ramble on for 30 minutes. All right, 30 minutes is up. If y'all want to know anything, put it down in the comments. I'll try to answer it as best as I can. And thank y'all for watching. And until next time, I'll check you later. Let's see now how I got to turn this off. All right, guys. Later.